Hello, everybody. This is a new friend. This is Figment. I don't know if Figment is still around, but he used to live in Disney World. And the word Figment kind of refers to imagination. And Figment was a big fan of using your imagination. So here I sit talking about estimating with compatible numbers. And an estimation is kind of like using your imagination to see what that answer might be. Or as Jador said, take a sneak peek at what that answer might be. And look, I have some healthy snacks, I'm having some grapes, and there's some water, and there's my tea, 13.1. Oh, 13 and 1 tenth, that's a decimal. That happens to be the Hartford Marathon Cup, because I've run the Hartford Marathon a couple times. Cool beans, good stuff. Anyway, so here we go. So estimating is a great tool, and we know that because it really saves us some trouble because it gives us a sneak peek into what our answer might look like. Oh, there's my cat Marley. She came to say hi. Say hi, Marley. Anyway, um, and so when we're dividing, it's often helpful to use these things called compatible numbers. And that's not a hashtag, people. It was the number sign long before it was a hashtag. So that's compatible numbers. And compatible means things that go together, like peanut butter and jelly. So I'm gonna always look for those compatible numbers to make my thinking easier. Because you know, our, our object of the year, our theme of the year is to work smarter, not harder. So anyway, I'm gonna take a look at this first expression and see what I can do. I wanna think about that whole number there, and then I'm gonna look at the divisor. Now five, that's a, that's a very friendly number, so I think I'll be all right. And I wanna think of multiples of five that could be near 60, and or 63. Oh, I just said the answer, didn't I? And I wanna think about a low estimate, so I can think about 60 divided by five, and then I also can think about a high estimate and I might think about 65 divided by five. And those are gonna give me two nice estimates. So I know that 60 divided by five equals 12. And so if 60 divided by five is 12, 65 is only one more group of five in it. So 65 divided by five is going to be 13. So now I know that when I do this decimal division, I'm gonna know that the answer is gonna be somewhere close to 12 and 13. And that'll kind of give me a target to shoot for, and it also might help me when I'm placing that decimal. All right, let's look at a couple more. So this next one's 43 times eight. And once again, I'm gonna think about that whole number part, and then I'm gonna think of multiples of eight. And let's see, I know that 40 is a multiple of eight, so I'm gonna call that my low estimate. And then the next multiple of eight is 48. So let's divide both of those. Oop, that looked like a plus sign, sorry. And let's think, so 48 divided by eight is six. 40 divided by eight equals five. That way I know that the answer to 43 and 6 tenths divided by eight can be somewhere in the vicinity of six or five. Because those are both really good estimates. All right, oh, this is a larger one. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so let's think about that whole number and let's think about multiples of three. Oh, I'm just gonna think about these first two numbers and I'm gonna think, well, I know that three times seven is 21, so let's see. Oh, there we go. Oops, I'm gonna draw a line so we can keep them separate. Yeah, 210, that's a great way to estimate 209. And then I know that 210 divided by three equals 7D, because 21 divided by three equals seven, so 210 divided by three equals 70. And so then I need to think of what's the multiple of three that's a little less than 20 or less than 21. And that's gonna be the number 18 so I could round 209 to 180. Hmm, okay. And then I divide that by three, and I know that 18 divided by three is six, 
So 180 divided by 3 is 60. So now I know that my answer to 209 and 3 tenths divided by 48 is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 70. Very helpful information. Oh boy. Now, what might we do if we happen to have double digits in the divisor? Let's check this out. Let's stick to our plan and talk about the first part of this, which is the whole number. And then let's think, hmm, let's round this to 40, because that's a multiple of 10, and that's a nice easy number to work with. So then I'm going to think about multiples of 4 near 17. Hmm, so I'm just using those first two numbers again. Huh, I bet 16 is going to work, so I can round 172 to 160. And then I can think, all right, what's the next multiple of 4? So I count by 4s. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Oh, all right. So let's think about rounding 172 to 200 and use that 20. And so then we're going to make these estimates. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. And I know because there's a 0 on each of these numbers that they're just going to kind of cancel each other out. But hey, just to double check, I could always think backwards. 5 times 40 equals 200. So that's a way to check. And then here I know that 16 divided by 4 is 4, and I know that I'm not going to add a 0 because there's one on each side, so they cancel each other out. But to double check again, I can double. I can just think 4 times 40 equals 160. All good. All right, so double digits doesn't seem to scare me too much. I hope not you either. Holy whoops, I might have spoke too soon. Let's see what we've got here. Well, let's talk about that whole number. Just focusing on those first two digits. Now I have an eight, so what are the multiples of eight? Oh, I was just thinking about multiples of eight a minute ago, and I used 48 and 40. Huh, look at that. I think I'm gonna try the same things. So I'm gonna round that to Oh, but it's different because I have 467, so that should round to 400 divided by 8. And then the estimate that's the high estimate would be 480 divided by 8. And then I can go ahead and divide. So I know there's eight group, six groups of 8 and 48, so there must be 60 groups of 8 and 480 because I need to think about that zero this time. And then I look here and I think how many groups of eight are in 40, and I know that answer is five, and I need to bring that zero over. So when I look at the answer to 476 and 6 tenths divided by eight, I know it's gonna be somewhere in the area of 50 and 60. <gasps> oh boy, I guess I saved the hardest one for last. Well, let's tackle this, I think we can do it. I'm gonna use Warhawks colors because I'm gonna need my big muscles for this one. So let's see, I wanna think about 82 as 80, because that'll make my brain hurt less. And then I'm gonna look here, I got 256. So what are some multiples of eight that are near 25? Oh, I know 24 is a multiple of eight, that's near 25. So I can round 256 to 240, and then eight, more than two, 24 is 32, so I can round higher using 320 because if I count by eights, I say 8, 16, 24, 32. So that's the next multiple up. And I'm going to go ahead and divide by 80 again. So let's see. I know that there are four groups of 8 and 32, and again, those zeros kind of cancel each other out. And then here I know that there is three groups of eight and 24. Again, not gonna bring those zeros over because they cancel each other out. So I now know that my answer is gonna be somewhere in the vicinity of the whole number four and the whole number three and probably some decimal places after that. So look at all this business. We just did this, this is great. 
Figment, how do you think we did? Oh, he's giving us the thumbs up. He says you guys did awesome. All right, see you later.